Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grow My Etsy Shop podcast. Hey, so today we're going to be talking about when somebody steals something from you on Etsy. So there's actually different levels or tiers to this. So I'm going to kind of start with the most um, aggressive one and then work our way down of kind of where our mindset should be and the actions that we should take when somebody is stealing something from us. So number one, the most aggressive way to steal is to like take someone's logo, take someone's uh, exact pictures and their descriptions and their SEO, like just to mimic the store. Um, if this happens to you, it's usually because you're not selling a unique product. You're selling something that um, you might be buying from overseas. You might be drop shipping, whatever it may be. Um, or you might be just taking two products together and putting them, you know, something that's very simple that manufacturing can do. They see that you're selling well on Etsy and they start to take it. So when this is the case, usually if you can get a sense that they don't speak English or that the store is um, from overseas, it's most likely because it is. This is a popular thing to do in India and China where they have a lot of manufacturing to just kind of kipe uh, recipes to what's working. So if you fall victim to this, what you want to do is immediately contact Etsy. You don't contact them. The reason for it is if you contact them, they will just take it down. And, and so your problems are solved, which is great, but they're just going to go find another poor innocent victim to do it to. And so what you want to do is you want to put a black mark on the record. Unfortunately, um, as of this recording, Etsy doesn't just shut the store down automatically, no questions asked type thing. They will put some black marks and it isn't until they get a few of those that they actually get shut down. So you want to make sure that um, you don't give them an opportunity to get off scot-free. All right. The next one is you get someone from Alabama who sees your product and thinks, oh, I can make that. I don't know why I chose Alabama. Um, and they say, great. And so they make it, but they're not online marketers. They don't really know how to write copy and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, they kind of dip into your side, right? They kind of, maybe they take a picture or two that they think's really good, or maybe they just copy and paste your description in there and they've got a name very similar to yours or whatever it may be. So in these in this scenario, you want to contact them first. And the reason for it is that if they're listening to this, they're going to sometimes the the bark that you can give can be scarier than the actual bite that Etsy can give if you catch my drift. So what you want to do is you want to get in there and say, hey, I noticed what you're doing. This is against Etsy's policy. I need you to take immediate action to, to rectify these things. Um you know, it takes a brave man or woman to just be like, screw you and just keep on going. Most likely they're going to make some appropriate changes. Keep in mind, they're allowed to make your product. They're allowed to market your product. They're allowed to do all that kind of stuff. And if they choose a name that's just one word different than yours, like they can do that. And so you just have to be, you know, you're not Nike. And so you have to be aware of this is how this is going to work. So contacting them first is usually the best route. And then of course you can go to Etsy if they're, if they just give you two middle fingers and move on with their life. But from my experience, most of the time that's enough to, because they know they're guilty. They're just being lazy. And so you're just kind of calling them out on their laziness, more or less. All right. So now let's talk about what we do when someone is just stealing our ideas. So they're stealing the way we market or they're stealing our SEO or they're, they took, we have, maybe we have a unique product that they've taken and are just running off with it. So in this scenario, this is where things change because before with the others, we are completely in the right. We are just innocently going and someone is just trying to piggyback on our branding. But when they start to just move to our products or to our SEO, this is where it gets a little bit more gray. So we're going to kind of break down and walk through what our mindset should be during um, if this happens to us. So if you are a victim of this, I want you to kind of sit back in your chair or wherever you're listening at this point, probably not just sitting at a desk listening to this unless you're committed and <laughs> really into this podcast, but you're most likely doing something. Go ahead and just take a second. And I want you to think about when you first launched your Etsy store. Um, most likely you got onto Etsy and you typed in your product, your keywords, the name of your store, something like that to see what's out there right? I think we all do this. What you're doing is very similar to what lots of people do on Etsy every day. 
they log on to Etsy and they type in their keywords and they look at stores that are more successful and seeing what they're doing. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, I encourage it. Now, let me tell you a quick story before you're like, oh, this guy, I thought I was going to get some secret recipe on how to make it so no one ever steals my stuff. Let me tell you a story. So, I, as you know, I sold on Etsy for uh, five years or something like that. And about a year in, maybe even less than a year, um, I was at a party and a friend of a friend came up to me. So I knew them, but I didn't know them super well. And they kind of just started asking me, hey, what do you do for work? And so I'm like, oh, you know, I, I'm a full-time seller. This is what I do. This is what I sell. It's really cool, blah, blah, blah. And I started to kind of describe the product. Now, th- this person I'm speaking to is female. She was... The, a perfect prospect, meaning that she was right in the demographics of the type of person we sell to. It was a baby product and she was going to be having a baby soon. So she is like dialed in as I'm talking to this product to her. She's really showing it to her. I had it because my wife had one in her diaper bag. So I'm pulling it out and I'm showing it to her and I'm explaining it to her. And she's like, oh, that's super cool. That's super cool. Yep, yep, yep. Cool, cool, cool. Anyway, have a good, have a good day. She moves on with her life. A couple of weeks later, Baby shower, we give her one as a baby shower gift. I think we give her two. We give her two as a baby shower gift. You know, bon voyage, enjoy your, enjoy your, uh, your baby. And she ends up moving to Arizona after she has her baby. And a few months later, <laughs> we got a little surprise when we logged on to Etsy to find that our product, which there were a lot of similar products. And again, we did something very similar. We went on there and we saw... There was kind of this niche, but we made it better, we felt like. And so we had altered. It wasn't, we just didn't take someone's exact product. We had altered what we thought would work better. And our altered version was being sold in a new store. And of course, as we did our research, we found that it was from this woman that we had given this gift to. So fast forward a few years and I'm on Amazon just looking at some stuff, doing some market research myself, just kind of what's going on there. And I'm not kidding you, my exact product is on Amazon. Like the pictures that I've taken with models who I've paid, um, like the colors, like my SKUs, like my exact, not from me. I didn't post it on Amazon. Someone else is selling my product from Amazon. Turned out to be someone from overseas. I, 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 I'm just, I, the reason I tell you the story is like, the more successful you get, the more this is going to happen. But we have to have the right mindset when it comes to all of this. So let me share this with you really quick. The woman who stole my product, and I'm, I'm, am I still bitter? Sure. But the woman who stole my product had more money than me at the time. So we were only, like I said, just under a year of selling our product. And she had a husband who had a career. <laughs> and so he had, was making a lot of money. She started to run this second business. And so she was able to invest a lot more money into the startup phases of the business than I was at the time. And she did a lot of things wrong. And I was able to watch her do those things and kind of learn from it and be like, oh, she's investing in this. Huh, that's expensive. I don't know if I want, for example, magazines and stuff like that. So I was able to see her invest in magazines and be like, is this working out for her? Is she continuing? And I was able to see like, oh, she's not continuing to do it. That means I was approached by those same magazines. They, they wanted $5,000 to be in uh, for a page. And then I was able to see her take it and not renew it. And I knew at that point, that was just a waste of 5,000 bucks that I would have, yeah, it would have been a lot of money for me at the time to invest $5,000 in advertising. She did it and it didn't work for her. So I kind of dodged that bullet. There were, however, things she was doing great. At that time, Facebook marketplace, or I'm sorry, just Facebook advertising was kind of in its infant stages and, and it used to just kind of be brands and then it started opening up more to small shops and she jumped on that and hired someone to run her ads. And guess what I did? I copied her ads. I saw what she was targeting. I saw how she was writing her ads. I saw the type of pictures and then the likes and the comments and all that was going with it. And I thought, I'm going to do that. So she's paying someone, I don't know, X amount of dollars a month to run her account. And I'm just taking the products that this professional's making and I'm making them in my own, replacing them with my own pictures and running those. And... I got to tell you this, that girl who stole my product made me more money than I would have ever made myself. And the reason for it is because 
competition was there. And that because competition was there and we were going back and forth, I was able to see the mistakes that she was making, see what she was doing right, and then take that data and bring it into my own business. And she pushed me to work harder and to, to compete because I knew if she just takes over Etsy and takes over everything, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sink. And so I was able to then diversify and bring my stuff like more, I started selling on Amazon. I started selling Shopify. Like I just started to go that direction because she was, and I, I made more money than I would have ever without her. And so as much as I, at the end of the day, I look at her and think, oh my gosh, that wench stole my product. And I, I don't think I would be anywhere near the experienced marketer that I am today without her. And so for me, it's kind of like this mindset shift that we need to have when we see that starting to happen to us. After I sold my business, I had, we took some time to kind of like, the, uh, we moved to Mexico or something. Anyway, it's a crazy story. But I got to kind of do a, dr- a dream job that of uh, something I've always wanted to do. And it was to coach water polo. And just briefly, the athletic director asked me at the time as I was coming in, hey, what's your vision? What do you think needs to be to work? Because at this time, the program wasn't very good. And I said to the athletic director, hey, there's three things that we need. And these were the three things that were sort of lacking within the program. I said, the boys need a work ethic. They need to understand hard work. They need to understand that this doesn't come easy. They need to have a hustle in them. They need to care. And I think most people who are listening to this podcast have that, right? They have this work ethic in them. They, they're, if you have a store and you're making products and shipping them out, that shows that you are not someone who's just going to sit and watch SpongeBob SquarePants all day. And so, A, check. Number two, I said, good coaching. They need someone who's going to help them. I see a coach as a member of the team. And they have a specific job that they do to the program or to the kids that they're supposed to see the bigger picture, the strategy that's involved, but they don't suit up and play. So they're just a, me- a member of the team. They just have a different position, but they're an important member of the team. And so I think by you listening to this podcast right now, you're receiving coaching for your business. So realistically, you're at, of the three things, you have two of them right now. So then the question is, what's the third? Well, the third is competition. So for me at that time, the boys were just playing really crappy teams in their area. And so they would, you know, at the end of the season, they say, yay, we had a winning season. But like you aren't playing anyone who's going to push you to be better. So what were they? They were a bunch of lazy water polo players. And so when I took over the program, we started playing teams that were more competitive and we saw a huge growth in the program. So number three is that. You, and I'm sure if I said to you, hey, who's your main competition? You're, you, at least if you've listened to other episodes of this podcast, you should know who they are. But naturally, we know who they are. And instead of seeing them as enemies and angry, we should see what they're doing and what's working. And we should take what's working. The idea is we're all trying to make money. That's what America is. It's a place that has opportunity. And whoever can provide the best product for the best value is going to win the game. So... By seeing what other people are doing, if someone else is providing more value, you want to jump on that and help with that. If someone else is just undercutting you and is just, you're thinking, how on earth are they making any money? Well, guess what? They're not going to be in business very long, so you don't have to worry about it. Or they're going to raise their prices eventually. Or you can just establish yourself as the better brand, right? You can establish yourself more. And we've talked about this in other episodes as well as writing your descriptions so that you bring your value up so that when they see one, they say, well, this is the cheap version. This is the expensive version. Instead of these are the exact same products. I'm going to get this one instead. Competition helps bring that out of us. We need it. You cannot be better without it. So look at your competition in a positive way. When someone is stealing your stuff, just know you're doing something right. That's what they're doing. And then watch them and see how it's working for them. And if they start to get some sales under their belt and you're seeing their sales start to tick up, are they doing the exact same thing as you? Are they just, there's got to be something different. If you're stealing what's working and you guys are selling similar products, that's, I mean, there's a reason why there's a Chevron and a, and a shell right next to each other at, uh, at a corner. And it's because they know this is a corner and that's competition and that's going to bring the price down for the consumer. It just works out that way. This is how it works. And so get that mindset going. And if you feel like by any means that like, hey, I am, I got a lot of hustle in me. I got a lot of work in me. I'm, I'm, I'm working hard and I have competition. There's people around me. I feel like my number two might not be very good that I'm just not, I'm just kind of in water polo scenarios, swimming around, not really knowing how to play. 
um, you're doing a great job by listening to the podcast. But if you want more of that number two, of that coaching that you feel like you need to be able to go to the next level, go ahead and go to growmyetsyshop.com. Fill out an application that's there. And that application is going to ask you a bunch of questions about your store. And then you're going to have an opportunity, if you qualify, to be able to get coached by me. We'll go through your store and we'll figure out what's wrong with it and where the where the kink is and we'll it's like a hose, you know, like kink hose, and we'll unkink it and let that that those sales start to go in. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and go to my website, growmyetsyshop.com, fill out that application and get some coaching in your life. All right, thanks so much for listening.